Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com coming to you today from the shores of the mighty River Nile to bring you episode number four in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn how to make Arduino and Python work together. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice enormous glass of ice cold coffee That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're getting out your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in episode number three. And that homework assignment was to get the potentiometer from your most excellent Elegoo Super Starter Arduino Kit and to build a circuit where you are reading the voltage off of the center tap of the potentiometer to read that number, that binary number, convert it to voltage, pass it over to Python, and then if, if you are new to, uh, to Python, just print it out. But if you've taken my vPython class, go ahead and make a visual, a 3D visual model of the voltage uh, uh, based on what you're reading from this potentiometer. And I did misspeak a little bit. We're going to pass the binary representation of voltage over to Python. And then in Python, we will convert it to voltage. How many of you guys were able to get the homework done? If you were able to do the homework, leave a comment down below saying, I am legend. And if you weren't able to do it, leave a comment. I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. But it's okay because even if you weren't able to get all the way through it, I'll show you my solution today. Now you guys that have taken my Visual Python class, I'm hoping that you will certainly post your solutions on YouTube and then in a comment down below put a link over to your solution and maybe some of you guys came up with better solutions than I have. And even if you just do the printing voltage, even if you just got that far, do a screen capture post your solution to YouTube, and then down below, leave a link over to your solution so we can kind of see what each other's doing. Develop a little bit of a sense of community around this class, okay? And then also, when you post your solution in your description, make sure to link back to this video so anyone who looks at it would have some sense of context of what you are able uh, actually doing. Okay, enough of this introductory banter. Let's move on and let's actually get busy. What we're going to do today is I've got to keep moving and not digressing on various random topics. We're going to have to do three things. We're going to have to build our circuit. Then after we build our circuit, we're going to have to code the Arduino. And then after we code the Arduino, we're going to have to do our code in Python. And I am really hoping I can do this in about a half an hour. So I will try to keep moving here. Okay, so in order to do that, I need you to fire up a most excellent, I need you to fire up a most excellent Arduino IDE. And it will take me just a second here to get this, uh, get this where you can see it have to do just a little bit of Windows management here. <clears throat> okay, let's see what we've got here. I find the I find the Arduino IDE just a tad bit awkward how it wants to save your program inside of a folder that it creates and then <laughs> excuse me, once it does that then it uh, it makes you want to save it. And then it's kind of confusing how uh, how it actually decides. It's kind of confusing how it actually decides what to do when you ask for a new file. But I think I've got something that you can see here pretty well. 
Yeah, I think you can see that. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to start, though, we're going to start by doing the hardware build. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to get the little potentiometer. And you see there's two legs to the potentiometer on one side. There's two legs on one side and one leg on the other side. I'm going to take the two legs and I'm going to put them above that center channel in the breadboard. And then I am going to press down very firmly because, in fact, the two most annoying components to use, one is the potentiometer and the other is the little switches because they don't really want to go down in those little slots very well inside of the, uh, uh, go down inside of the uh, breadboard very well. Okay, now I'm going to come here and I am going to connect to the center tap and that center tap is where we're actually going to be reading the voltage and then I'm going to connect that to pin A0. Okay, now I am going to need to, uh, that's probably, mm, that's probably going to need to go up here. I need to probably use the shorter wire, okay, to come over here and go to A0. Ah, you know what? I'm just going to have to stop and get a longer wire. Those wires are a little too short, but that's okay. We have our super starter kit here handy, and let's just see that is a hugely grotesquely long wire, but that will work, and that was the first one that came out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from a pin A0, that's where we're going to read the voltage, and I am going to come over to the center tap of the uh, of the potentiometer. Now what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go on the left leg of the potentiometer and we are going to put that at 5 volts. And let's see if I can read that here. I think is that 5 volts. I'm going to have to peek and see if I actually really got the 5 volts. I got to go over one more. So we're going to hook that to 5 volts. Okay. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is the pin on the right, the right pin of the potentiometer, I'm going to put that to ground like that. Okay. Now I got to take a peek at this to make sure that I've got those in the right one and uh, not quite. I'm sorry. It's just hard for me to see it in the camera view very well. And so I've got to just do an adjustment here and get that firmly affixed as such. Okay. Now again, the uh, A0 goes to the center tap and then the uh, five volts we're going to put at the right of the potentiometer, the right leg of the potentiometer, and the ground we are going to put at the left leg of the potentiometer. Okay, that was a little bit of a disaster, but I did warn you that that uh, potentiometer is hard to plug in. Okay, now I think we are ready to code. I'm going to see if I can make that code view a little bit bigger font for you, just because I think it might help you to see it if it were just a little bigger. Okay, that's pretty good. I think you can read that and it's not insanely large. So let's see if we can go with that. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we are going to read from that A0 pin. So we need to set up a variable for the pin, or at least I like to give my pins variable names. I'm going to call that pot pin because that is the pot pin and that is equal to A0 and that is a int. You might not view A0 as an int, but in the crazy world of Arduino, Arduino views A0 as an int. Don't want to forget our friend Mr. Semicolon. Now, I am also going to want to read from that, so I need a variable to read into. And since I'm reading a value from the potentiometer, I'm going to call that variable pot val like that. And we don't need to give a value to pot val because it will read that from that pin. We don't need to give it an initial value. And then also I don't want it to run too quickly. So I'm going to put in uh, set up to put in a delay and I will just call that variable DL. And we're going to set that to 100 milliseconds. So that means it will be making a measurement every tenth of a second. And that should be pretty good, I think. This is really a very ugly build. I'm sorry I didn't get better wire placement and stuff, but we're going to go ahead. All right. 
So now what we need to do is we need to do a little bookkeeping here in our void setup. First of all, if we're going to read from that pen, we need to do a what? We need to do a pen mode and we're reading from pen which? pot pin and then that is going to be a what it's going to be an input okay <clears throat> then also we need to start our serial monitor so i will do a serial dot begin okay and that is going to be serial dot begin 115,200 with no comma and then i'll close that also guys you need to make note and make sure you know what com port you're on with this and you can see that my arduino is on com3 you need to just make note of what com port your arduino is on because we're going to need that over on the python side okay we're ready to code this uh, void loop now and so what we're going to do is we're going to start by just reading that pot val the value from the potentiometer so i'm going to say pot val is equal to how do i get that value i do a read what kind of read analog read because it is an analog pen i'm going to do an analog read where am i going to read <clears throat> pot pen okay i'm going to read from pot pen and then what do i need to do i want to send that now over to python and i send it over the serial port on com3 and how do i do that with a simple print so i do serial dot print ln what do i want to print pot val okay like that and now i just need to put in a little bit of a delay so that it doesn't run too fast like that okay now guys i think we are ready to try to download this and we are going to return to our long-held tradition of holding our breath when we try to download something i'm going to look and make sure that i have not forget forgotten any semicolons because i have been programming in python for the last year but it looks like they're there so we're going to go ahead and try to do this i need everyone to hold their breath and it wants us to save it this is what i hate about this okay we're going to call this pass data 2 pass data 2 we'll save it okay now it's running but it's kind of late to hold our breath and it says it worked now what we want to do is we want to look and just see if we are getting values before we try to go over and work on the python side so if we hit our serial monitor we're on 115 200 okay we're getting numbers now as i change this potentiometer you see i can go from 1023 all the way to zero and so that is working very well now one thing i notice is at the left it's at 1023 and at the right it is at uh it is at zero and i kind of like left to be the low number and i'll show you a real simple way to fix that we could do that in code or it's even simpler if we just exchange the position of the wires on the outside legs and so ground will go on the right ground will go on the right and the five volts will go on the left and that's probably how i'd figured it out before i did this but then with my big fiasco with the wires i got them on there wrong so let me look and make sure i have those i missed that one by one okay so ground is on the right leg of the potentiometer the left leg of the potentiometer is hooked to five volts and then we again make sure that potentiometer is plugged all the way in and like i say the potentiometer is indeed a very annoying component let's take a look again just make sure it goes the right way this time okay so now it's at zero when i'm all the way to the left and as i turn it to the right as i turn it to the right it goes to 1023 so boom we have this thing done so of the three things that we want to do we have two of them done already and so what we need to do now is we need to start working on the old python side so i need you to call up your most excellent visual studio code and then what we are going to do is we are going to come over here and remember we are working in this working folder of pi arduino okay and in that folder i need to create a new program so i had better come over here to oh you can't see that okay i got confused i thought i wasn't on the right shot but you can in fact see that okay so i'm going to come over here and i'm going to say create a new program and then i'm going to call that pass data dash two dot p y and the dot p y is kind of important and boom 
fresh new Python program just waiting for you to write. Okay, now to give you a little bit, bit better view, I am going to uh, turn that Explorer off. Let's see if I can give you a little bit bigger font view. Let's try that unless that box starts popping up and getting really annoying, but let's just see if that will work for right now. Let's see if it'll work for right now. Okay, so what we are going to do is <clears throat> we are going to start by importing some libraries. The first thing that we need to do is we need to get my cursor over here, import time, because we're going to need to put a delay in, we'll need the library time. Also, we want to be able to read from that serial port, so we need to import serial. And remember, that is that Pi serial library that we that we uh, installed in episode number two. So now we've got our libraries. Now what we need to do is create the object, that serial port object that we will actually read from. So we will do that. And I will call that Arduino data. You can call it Kitty Litter Box if you want to, but I think Arduino data is a little more descriptive because that is what I'm going to be reading there. And that is going to be equal to serial dot, wait for it, serial uppercase, okay, serial dot serial, and then wh what is our COM port? Well, for me, it was COM3, but you need to put whatever your COM port was. You probably aren't on three, but remember I had you check it earlier. Whatever COM port you were on, you need to use that one. <clears throat> now what I need to do is I need to tell it the baud rate, which was 115200. Okay, that looks good. So now we have it. Now remember, it takes just a little time to set up that serial port and you don't want to start grabbing data from it before it's set up. So we need to just need to do a time <clears throat> dot sleep of one second, which is more than enough, but that'll just make sure when we get down in the main loop and start reading data that that, uh, that, that uh, serial port is ready to go. And it only does it one time, so it's like no big deal. It only does the setup one time, so it's not really slowing you down. Okay, now we need to go in and start reading the data. Well, how do we do that? We need a loop. So we're going to loop while true. When is true true? True is always true. And so this is going to create an infinite loop that's just going to go out and read data <clears throat> from the serial port. Well, the first thing we want to do is we don't want to read data if we haven't if there's no data there. So we want to sit and we want to wait until data shows up. So we make another while loop and we're going to say while <clears throat> Arduino data dot in waiting while Arduino data dot in waiting while that equal equals zero. So that means we want to stay in this loop as long as there's no data while the in waiting data is zero. As long as that's true, we're going to loop. And what do we want to do in that loop? Absolutely nothing. We just want to pass. So it's just going to hang here until there's data. And then when there's data, then it will drop out of the while loop. And then what do we want to do? Well, we want to read. Well, I'm going to read. I'm going to call it data packet. And then we'll turn this data packet into things in a minute. But I'm just going to read the data packet. And I do that by going to our Man, I always misspell this. This is not Arduino, Arduino. And then this needs to be fixed here, Arduino. I hope you guys were yelling at me, Arduino data. And then how do I get it? Read line, open, close. Okay, now at this point, data packet should have that packet that it's uh, uh, grabbed off the serial monitor. <clears throat> let's just print it to see what it looks like. And we know that we're going to have to clean it up, but let's just look at it to see how we will uh, pack it like that. Okay, so let's see if we're getting the data. Now, we don't have to do anything over on the Arduino side because that has already been, you know, that's already running and sending data. So all we got to do here is just run. Okay, we've got data coming in 1023. And then as I change it, it changes. That's good. Okay, but now what do we need to do? We need to clean it up. And what do we not like? We don't like that B, that byte indicator. And then we don't like, like the slash R slash N. So what I will do is I will stop here and we will go in and clean this data up. Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to take that byte structure and change it to a string. So we do that by saying data 
<clears throat> packet is equal to the string value of data packet, okay? And I think I need to roll this up a little bit. The string value of data packet. And then remember, I got to put in telling it what format we're using, UTF-8, dash, dash like that. Okay, now it should turn that data packet byte structure into a good, good old-fashioned data packet string. So now... If I run it again, I should just get a nice clean, uh, a nice clean number. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do I not like? It's skipping a line, and it is skipping a line every time because of that slash r slash n. So let's go ahead and strip that slash r slash n off, and I will do that by data packet is equal to data packet. Okay. Data packet. Okay. Dot strip. All right, and then what do I want to strip? I want to strip inside of a single quote slash r slash n. Okay, and that should fix that. Okay, so let's run that. Okay, very good. So now I've got a nice clean data. Now, what is the only problem that I have now? The only problem that I have now is that is a string, right? Because we made it a string. And if we want to do math, it needs to be a number. And so we could say data packet is equal to, to int of data packet, or we can just combine it in this step and come over and just say int. And we'll do it all in one line. We'll int it right there like that. So now data packet will be an int. All right, but that is a voltage in a binary form going from 0 to 1023. And what we want to do is we want to convert that into a real-world voltage. And what is a real-world voltage? A real-world voltage would be a voltage between 0 and 5 volts because that's what we know the Arduino does. And so what we need to do is do a little math to figure out how to take a number between 0 and 1023 three and turn it into a number from zero to five. Now I know a lot of you guys are saying, oh, just use the map function. Yeah, but I want you to understand the math. And I know a lot of you guys would say, is, oh, well, I can just do it with a ratio. Yeah, but I want you to understand the math. So what we are going to do is we are going to do the math. And that way, when you have a problem that cannot be solved with the map function, you will actually know how to do math. Now, this is math that you already know, but actually here you're seeing a real world example of why you would use the math. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the most excellent uh, sketchpad view, and we're going to do a little math. Well, what are two things we know? One thing that I know is I know that when I have a reading of zero coming off the pot, that corresponds to what voltage? That corresponds to zero volts. So zero value from pot valve corresponds to zero volts. And then what else do I know? I know that if I read 10, 23, from the potentiometer, that corresponds to what? Five volts, because that is the maximum that comes out of the Arduino. So I have two points, and what I need is the equation for the line there. Well, what do we have on the uh, on, on uh, this axis, the x-axis. Well, that we're not going to call it the x-axis. We're going to call it the uh, we're going to call it the pot valve. Okay, that is going to be pot valve, that's what we read, that is the independent variable, and then I want to take pot valve and I want to change it into what? Voltage. So the vertical axis is going to be voltage. Well, if I have zero pot valve, what does that com correspond to in voltage? It's zero. So it's the point zero, zero, which is this point here. And similarly, we need to plot this point here, which is if I read 1023, on the pot valve, what does that correspond to? That corresponds to 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would correspond to 5 volts. Okay. And then you can draw a line through those two points. Okay. This is the point 10, 23, 5. This is the point. 0, 0, and I want the equation of this line. Well, how do I find it? If you want the equation of a line, the first thing that you have to do is you have to find the slope. So let's do that. We know that m 
is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, for us, what does that correspond to? Well, that would correspond to, in our variables, that would be voltage 2 minus voltage 1 over pot val 2 minus pot val 1. Okay, so the M then is going to be equal to voltage 2 is what? 5 minus voltage 1, which is 0, over pot val 2, which is 1023, minus pot val 1, which is 0. <clears throat> okay, and then what you can see is the, the end slope is 5 over 10. 23. Okay, now what do we know? I'll start up here. We know that the equation for the line is y minus y1 is equal to m onto x minus x1. So we're going to say y minus, what is y1? y1 is 0 is equal to m, what is that? 5 over 10, 23 onto x minus 0. Okay, when we combine those things together, we get y is equal to 5 over 10, 20, 3 times x. Okay, now we're going to rewrite it in terms of our variables, and so we're going to say that the voltage, which is our y, is equal to 5 divided by 10, 23 times the pot valve. Okay, now we have an equation. This is the equation that we can actually program in. Now, why do I do this? I do this because I want you to understand math and I want you to see why it's important. And when we get to more complicated problems, you can't just use your little men mental gymnastics or your math map function to make it work. Okay, let me get my keyboard back over here so we can start coding again. Got a little bit of chords messed up there. Although I do, I do have to say I am doing much, much better in staying organized in my new, uh, in my new uh, studio. You can see here that I'm really trying to keep my desk organized. I'm trying to keep my cables managed well, and I think I'm doing a lot better job. I'd like to do better cable management still, but I, I just need, I need some longer cables and I need a few more things. But I am really committed to doing a much better job in, uh, in cable management and organizing organization this time around. But I have digressed. Let's come back to our code view. And so what do we have? That data packet, that data packet was actually pot val. And so really what I should say is pot val is equal to my data packet now, right? Because I passed over pot val, I read it as data packet, but now that I have it all cleaned up, I'm going to go back and call it pot val. Okay, now for my equation, what do I want to calculate? I want to calculate voltage, and that is equal to open parentheses 5 divided by 1023. And because 5 is an int and 1023 is an int, an int divided by an int can give you zero, so I'm going to force this to be floating point math by putting uh, uh, decimal points there. And I got to tell you, one of the most common and just gut wrenching errors that I see is people that do integer math and get an unexpected zero, and then it's really, really hard to debug. So I am just in the habit of always forcing things to be floating point math in this, you know, in cases like this, just to make sure that that doesn't happen. And then times what? Times pot val, which we just set up. Now let's just do a quick print of the voltage. I hope I'm saying voltage and not saying volume. Okay, so now let's come in here. Let's run this. Okay, so now I come over here. I turn all the way to the left. I've got zero volts. And now very neatly, I'm going up very, very neatly all the way to five. All right. Now, what's one thing I don't like? I don't like it when I'm reading like an 8-bit number and I'm turning it into a 27 decimal point precision. Really, I think what would be good here would be to go just to a tenth of a volt. And so what I'm going to say is voltage is equal to round 
and I want to round voltage how many places. Let's just round it to one place and that way it should be like 1.1, 1.2 like that. Let's see if that'll work. Okay, it's 5.0 and look at that. Isn't that nice? And so we're getting nice nice voltages there okay we are really really making progress and if you guys are newbies then that's kind of what you needed to do but for you old pros you home gamers that have been following along with me for a while what we want to do is we want to do a visual and you new guys you can follow a learn along and learn how to do a visual now you have to remember in lesson number two you were supposed to install the visual python library so if you did lesson number two this is going to work for you so what we need to do is we need to come back up here and we need to import that library so I'm going to import and what am I going to import I am going to import or I'm going to say from the Python the Python import star so that says bring in everything from the python then what i want to do is after i create my serial monitor i want to create a tube and what i want that the length of that tube to represent the voltage and so as the voltage gets bigger the tube gets longer as the voltage gets smaller the uh the tube gets uh smaller and so i need to create that tube so i'm going to call it tube and that is going to be equal to cylinder cylinder is one of those v python commands cylinder and then i got to set the color so i'm going to say color <coughs> is equal to color dot blue now i got to tell you this color method will just kind of work for red green blue yellow cyan magenta black it white it doesn't work on every color i'll show you you know there's ways you can mix up any color you want but if you want these shortcuts it's a it's a small number of colors you can do so if you say color equal color dot fuchsia don't be surprised if it doesn't work then also let's give it a radius and so the radius of this sphere i want the radius of this cylinder i want to be equal to let's say one inch and then what i want to do now is i want to uh i want to just leave it like that i think i'll take that extra comma off all right so that should create that should create the cylinder and also i think let me go ahead and just give it a length is equal to five so it's going to create it and it's going to be five long and the thing is the length will change down here though so what i want to do is i want to take out this print uh, vol here i now have the voltage so what do i want well i want my tube my tube dot length right that length that i set up here for the tube i want every time through the loop i want to change the tube dot length and i want to change it to what voltage okay so now as i turn the knob that should come to life and should get bigger and smaller so let's see if that works boom we at least got a tube okay so now let's see as i turn this all the way to the left it gets smaller and smaller and then as i turn it to the right it gets longer and longer so that is five volts and that is zero volts okay so that is really 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 good okay that works really really good okay what do i not like so much about that i think it would be better if it was going up and down a little bit more like a uh, meter which i just think would be vertical would make more sense so i'm going to come in and when i create the tube i'm going to tell it that instead of pointing to the right i want it to point up and you do that by assigning an axis okay and the axis is a vector and that vector needs three numbers it needs three different numbers and the way that works is the way that works is excuse me just a second i need to do a little chair management here ah that's much better okay the chair was tipping back on me so this is the way the the access statement is it's where you want to point it so if i and it goes x y z and x is uh and remember your left is my right but x is to the left or x is to the right 
Y is up and Z is out of the screen. So X is to the right, positive Y is up and positive Z is back towards you. And so if I said one, that would be X and then zero, zero, it would be pointing this way. If I said zero, one, zero, it would be going up. If I said zero, zero, one, it would be coming out. If I said zero minus one, zero, it would be going down. And so that's kind of how the, these directions go. So what do I want? Up would be zero to the right. It would be one up and it would be zero out. And now that should make it go in the right way. So now let's run this and see what happens. Boom, it's going up and look at that. As I turn this, okay, that actually happened. Now what happened? It disappeared. Okay, it disappeared. And I'm glad that happened because I can show you how to fix that. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes, if you set the length, if you set the length of an object to zero, it makes it go away and it makes it disappear and then it won't come back. And so we've got to just make sure that we never make it zero. So we're going to say if <clears throat> volume is equal to equal to zero, uh, if, if voltage is, I keep saying volume, if voltage is equal equals zero, then what do I want to do? I just want to say voltage is equal to 0.001, just a really small number. And that should keep it from disappearing. So let's see if that actually works. We're going to run it now. Let's make sure. Okay, try it again. Okay, there it is. And now let's see if I go all the way down. It does look like it's gone, but then it comes back because I didn't disappear it because I never let it actually go to zero. Okay, is that pretty cool? I think that's pretty cool. Now, what would I do now on this? Well, what I would do now is I think that that is a really, really good visual for kind of like qualitatively what's going on with voltage. But I think it would also be nice to quantitatively understand. So you have both the qualitative and the quantitative quantitatively understand what that voltage is. And so what I want to do is I want to put on my scene, I want to put a label. Okay, so besides a tube, what I want to create is I want to create a label. I'll call it LAB. You can call it whatever you want, but that is going to be the vPython object label. And now I've got to give it some parameters. I've got to tell it what text do I want. Well, to start with, I'll just say text is equal to, we set the length to five to start. So let's go ahead and set it to five volts. That will be the initial label. Now we're going to update the label down below, but at least the first time it fires up, it'll show five. And then what do I want to do? I need to, uh, I think I just do that. Let's just see what happens. Now down here, what I want to do is say tube.lab. That's what I called it. And that is, uh, no, not tube. We called it lab b dot what am, what am i changing the text okay so what i'm changing is this text value each time so label dot text is going to be equal to what voltage but now what you got to see is this label command this text command it wants a string so i better take the string of the voltage and then display that as text and let's see what happens <coughs> Okay, I've got a number there. And now as I turn this, look at that. All right. So I get the qualitative value and I get the quantitative value. And the one kind of quirky thing is, is that it's showing my 0.001 and I don't like that. So that kind of threw me off. So what I need to do is I need to, after, I, I need to round it again. Okay, so I'm going to take this round and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to take this round. And 
edit cut okay and I'm going to put it down here I'm going to round it after I do this other stuff and then that will make sure that it does, it's not going to show up that 0 0.001 like that all right now what is the uh, let's okay let's do that let's run that and see what happens let's try it again what unexpected oh that was a rookie mistake bad indent let's try it again Okay, so it started down, it's showing it now at zero and not. So that was good. Then I go up to five. I can come back to zero and it doesn't disappear. Okay, it doesn't disappear. Okay, that is really good. Now, what is one thing that I don't like now? <clears throat> one thing that I don't like now is I don't like the little box around the four. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to come up to my label where I create the label and I'm going to say box is equal to false and that should take the box off. Now also I didn't like that it was kind of halfway in and halfway out of the blue and so I think I would like to move it up a little bit and the way I will move it up a, a little bit I will tell it a position POS okay and the position again is equal to a vector that is just a number with three parts to it vector vector okay now in x i don't want to move it in x and so i'm going to leave x at zero <clears throat> now in y i want to move it up a little bit so i'll just put like 0 0.2 just to get it up a little bit and then in z i don't want it to come out so i'm just going to put a zero there like that and so let's see if that will make that a little bit more attractive. Okay, do you see that? Now it's right all on the tube. It's not hanging out the bottom. Boom. I think that is just super, super slick. I really, really, really like that. Okay, what... Uh, <clears throat> So that would be the homework assignment for you, uh, you know, you guys that have been taking all of my lessons. You new guys, you now see how to do it. Go back and see if you can do it on your own. Just see if you've seen me do it. Now see, go back and see if you can do it on your own. And then what the homework assignment for next week is, the homework assignment is going to be to make more of a rotary dial that as the voltage changes as you spin this, you have sort of a dial, you have a needle against a dial that changes. And that would really look kind of like one of your old style analog voltmeters. And so what I want you to do is I want you to make that graphic. Now, the cool thing is, as we're making these graphics and we start going to more advanced and more complicated circuits and components, we'll have a little library of things like these displays we can go back and draw on. And so it'll actually be very useful. And so what your homework is, is to make a uh, analog voltmeter display that you will make live through this same circuit okay and guys remember do a screen capture post your homework to youtube leave a comment down below with a link to your solution and then in your video in the description link back to this and that way we can see what each other is doing on the homework get to know each other a little bit okay guys <clears throat> I hope you all are having as much fun taking this class as I am making it. I'm really excited. It has been a year since I've done any Arduino coding, and I am really excited to get back to the hardware and to get back to the uh, to the Arduino board. And so I'm just really looking forward to the exciting things that we're going to be doing in this series of lessons. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be developing more and more and more sophisticated hardware on the Arduino side, and then more and more and more sophisticated and 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 uh, uh, impressive 
uh, 3D visualizations of the data. So we'll be doing more complicated projects that will be doing a lot more on the Arduino side and a lot more on the Visual Python side. But the cool thing is already what you can see is, is that you can do something in Arduino, you can pass it to Python, and then you can do what you want in Python. And I think that is just pretty cool. Okay, guys, again, Paul McCorder coming to you from the shores of the mighty River Nile. You guys have a great day. I will talk to you later.